Hi there, Jamie Taylor here for Mike's Masterclasses to tell you about my new session which is all about rhythm guitar. And specifically it's about how we can use three note voicings on the bottom string and the inner two strings to create really mobile and swinging rhythm guitar parts somewhat in the manner of Freddie Green or Jim Hall with Bill Evans, Herb Ellis with Oscar Peterson, that sort of stuff. Bucky Pizzarelli, mind you, we don't have the seventh string. I've found that in my private teaching, people are often interested in how to get from a simple progression to something that's more elaborate, but is still compatible with the original. So to give you an example straight up, here's a really simple rendition of Minor Swing, Django Reinhardt. <laughs> Now here it is with a more elaborate progression. Now what we do in the class is we go from a to B. I'll show you exactly how that more elaborate progression is derived from the first one, how the voicings are arrived at, what's going on theoretically. And we do it on minor swing, also on autumn leaves. So again, the simple progression here. <laughs> Then a more elaborate two shapes per chord setting here. And then finally we pull out all the stops and go for four chords per bar, a different inversion on every beat. And that gives you something like this. And every single one of those chords is being played on the bottom string and the inner two. I reckon I could survive a rhythm guitar gig with just those strings on my instrument actually. So this might save you a little bit on guitar strings as well. Beyond that there's just a little bit of technical advice on how to actually deliver uh, nice sounding rhythm guitar parts as well and practicing them in time. But really the main focus is on how we would actually elaborate those progressions and end up with something that's really active and interesting but it's not in anyone's way. You can play this stuff on the bandstand even with a pianist and hopefully you won't annoy them. If I've annoyed any of the pianists that I play with then certainly they've been too kind to let me know so I'm hoping that uh, you know they would uh, agree that this stuff can be used on guitar and still leave plenty of space in the ensemble for other people to do their thing. There's a little bit of a tie-in with some of my earlier sessions, much earlier sessions actually, a guide to practical comping part one being the one that I'm thinking of in particular, that's probably 10 years old now. Uh, it'd be a nice companion piece to that because that gives you perhaps a little bit more theoretical depth, whereas this one is more of a dive into sort of practical etudes. But I do give a little bit of an outline in this new session as well uh, about you know how these voicings are arrived at in the first place. So if that sounds like it's of interest, I hope you'll come and check it out and I look forward to seeing you in class. Thanks ever so much for watching.